This is Robert F. Kennedy Jr., a major public figure in American politics. In 2012, something strange started happening to him. He began feeling seriously unwell. It started with severe headaches, then came confusion and even seizures. He began losing memory and found himself struggling with everyday tasks. On the top of that, he was getting dizzy, losing balance and feeling weaker with each passing day. It got so bad that he had no choice but to visit a doctor, thinking that he had some kind of neurological problem. At first, doctor thought it might be a common brain disorder. But when his symptoms kept getting worse, they decided to dig deeper. After running several tests, including an MRI scan of his brain, doctors were shocked by what they found. The scan revealed odd-looking crisps and spots in his brain, which pointed to something unusual, a possible parasitic infection. To be sure, they did a blood test and a spinal tap, both of which confirmed the unimaginable, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. had a tape bomb in his brain. This condition is called neurocysticercosis, caused by the larvae of pork tape bomb. But how could even this happen? Well, neurocysticercosis happens when someone accidentally eats food or drinks water that has been contaminated with eggs of a pork tape bomb. Once inside the body, the eggs hatch and the larvae move around, sometimes ending up in the brain, where they form these small crisps. These crisps then start causing all sorts of neurological problems in including seizures, headaches, confusion, and even more. It is most common in places where sanitation isn't great or where pork is undercooked. If untreated, this condition can be life-threatening. To fight this infection in Kennedy's brain, doctors gave him powerful antiparasitic medicines like albendazole designed to kill the tape bomb larvae. These drugs work by messing up the worm's biology, ultimately killing it. But there was another issue. The worm had died which had caused inflammation in Kennedy's brain. So doctors had to give him steroids to control the swelling. Even though the parasite was no longer alive, there were still remnants left in his brain and were needed to be dealt with. To remove these leftovers, surgeons performed a delicate procedure to remove the dead worm tissue, carefully working to avoid damaging any healthy brain areas. Afterward, Kennedy received a lot of care and rehabilitation and successfully recovered from both infection and surgery.